Hello all and welcome back to another episode of the Game Time CT Pick'em's Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Paguaga, and joining me as always, the Sean Patrick Foley. Sean, we are on to week nine. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a slog, but it goes by fast. It's crazy. Yeah, it's been a crazy year as well. Um, you eight and two. Not bad. You're moving your way back up. You picked up two games on the leader, boss man Dan Brecklin, who who like your boy stumbled to a six and four finish this week, tied for last with the eight ball. I just hope it's not too late. I just hope it's not uh, too late. I mean, I I got eclipsed by Dave Stewart, who had a nine and one week. So yeah, well, oh, well again, at I, I, yeah, well, at least I'm in within striking distance here. Well, exactly. I, okay. I thought I every week I go, oh, man, I got crushed. Man, I got six and four. How do I do that? So keep, I'll keep believing that. Well, keep I'll it. tell you this. Um, the 20 games on Thanksgiving and then the, uh, was it, 24 quarterfinal games or whatever it is, whatever ridiculous number of quarterfinal games is, I mean, that just puts a lot. That changes a lot. Yep. Um, and then it I, gets, when you get to the semifinals and the championships, that's when it gets a little touch and go where you might not be able to make a move. So it's the Thanksgiving ones that really count. And the Thanksgiving games – as you, if you follow along and you've paid attention to the way we do things, it's not which games are the best. Now there are some good ones that kind of get rotated in, but like we put a we put ones with a lot of history in them every year, uh, and those games are, are really coin flips, you know. And I think the Darien New Canaan game, the Turkey Bowl, is going to be a coin flip this year mm -hmm. uh, with who's going to win. I think half of us will take one, half will take the other, and. You know, well, we know who like Dave Stewart and Scott Erickson are going to pick, but you know, the other of us, we don't know. And, uh, or like Stratford and Vanell, like we know Joe's going to take Stratford. No way Joe would pick against his alma mater. Where, so. where you put Amity in there, well, well, they won't be in there. But if Amity played a Thanksgiving Day game again, you know, I wouldn't go with Amity. I mean, come on. I mean, geez. If St. John the Baptist I don't have ever. that type of uh, issue with my alma mater. These if guys. St. John the Baptist ever ends up on the board, I would probably pick them. <laughs> But that would be a real long shot if they if I mean look don't get me wrong Bishop Hend Hendrickson's basically in the CIAC so maybe St John the Baptist could uh, could, yeah. could join from Long Expand Island expand the alliance let's bring in Long Island imagine that anyway my parents would love it it would give me a reason to go home Staples going down the West Island to play St John the Baptist uh, I would go sure. And then Alliance game, <laughs> oh, so great! And for the double L, right? That'd be great. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's get it over. I'll rip this bandaid off. Let's, let's go. get it over with. I like that. All right, going to the C C C to start. We got Bristol Eastern three and four going on the road to play Middletown. Bristol Eastern had a good start to the season, but then they ran into Newington, Weathersfield, Eo Smith. Uh, they kind of sit here at three and four. Middletown also three and four. We were raving about the Blue Dragons after they took care of business against Bloomfield. But I mean, look at this schedule. Bunnell, six and one, Newington, seven and zero, oh. Weathersfield, six and one. The schedule has not been kind to the Blue Dragons. Sean, you are up first. Who do you like in this one? No, that Ram game too. That was a yeah. oh, like where ooh, they, they lost that game uh, thirty two to nothing. I mean, like did they not get off the bus in that one? Goodness, um, that's a tough one though. This is the thing I'm going to pin down. I don't know a heck of a lot about both teams. I know Bristol Eastern and we were kind of singing their praises early because they were having off on a nice little clip. They had the rush run game going and everything. Uh, but the thing, the metric that kind of sticks out to me is that Bristol Eastern hasn't. Uh, well, where am I? Yeah, Bristol Eastern. I don't think they've beaten a team with a winning record. No, not even that. They, their teams that they've beaten are Avon 0 and 7, Pomprog 0 and 7, and Farmington 1 and 6. You know, at least Middletown's been able to beat a team that's 5 and 2. I'm going to go with the Dragons. Yeah, I, uh, I too, am going to go with the Blue Dragons. Middletown also beat EO Smith, who Bristol Eastern has lost to. Mm. So that's my there common opponent. All right, to the CTC we go. I picked these games. Probably Friday before we really kick off, and then I make some changes. Depends on what happens, but I'm looking at the CTC schedule, and I'm like, I don't know who stands out. You know, Bullard is kind of in the mix of four and three, or I think they might have been three and three when 
I did it. And then I'm ATI. ATI is probably going to be four and three, too. This is going to be great. And ATI goes out and thumps Genie Tech. Um, but I kept the game on the board. Look, Bullard Haywards is four and three, but two of those losses, Bethel and Brookfield. Yeah. Those are two potential playoff teams. One loss between them. Yeah. And, and, and Bethel in a resurgence. And they have lost to, to Quinnebach Valley of the CTC, who is 4 0 in the CTC themselves in Quinnebach Valley. And here, you know, ATI um, just absolutely thumped Trini Tech. I, uh, I'm i a little torn in this one. I'm going to ride the hot hand, though, and I'm going with ATI. I'm going with Chris, with, with Pace, and, and United. Uh, Sean, who do you like? They won't thump Bullard Havens. This is going to be a real rock and sock CTC game. You know, love it. Um, they're gonna be. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go with ATI too. Uh, I believe ATI has got their number. They've been certainly a gold standard in the uh, CTC of late with Jason there. But uh, don't don't sleep on the tires. I am going with ATI though. Hot hand. All right. To the ECC. We talked about the show a lot on the Meat Grinder. If you have not, go and listen. All right. Stop what you're doing. Go back and listen to the Meat Grinder and come back like 45 minutes later. All right. ECC. Wyndham, 6-1, and one, coming off a loss to Fitch, going on the road to Waterford. Waterford is 7-0. and oh. Sean, you saw Waterford this year yeah. against Ledger. I'm going to let you talk about him in a little bit. Just quickly looking at the schedules here. Waterford, one win against the team with a winning record. One. Wyndham has two, uh, but they also lost to Fitch. Waterford hasn't played a team bigger than an M school, while Wyndham has played a couple of M schools, um, you know, as well. So not really anything crazy here. Obviously, Fitch is an L school. Uh, this game's kind of a toss-up, but Sean, you saw Waterford and you yeah. love Wyndham. So who do you like in this one? No, I really like Waterford in this one. Uh, I know the Wyndham guys are going to be hooting and hollering about this. The guys, you know, you can't lose to Fitch. I mean, Fitch was down. This was the year to take him. You lose by one, you know, it just shows you the disparity uh, in between the uh, ha- you know, the large schools and the small schools and why everyone screams in the small schools that they got to play NFA and Fitch. But, you know, Wyndham's usually usually steps up in those games. They played competitive, just couldn't pull through. You know, meanwhile, uh, Waterford's already been in test. They already got a big test uh, against uh, Ledger. I think that they're one of the better teams in the league right now. I mean, even though I think Wyndham beat them too. Yes, right? they did. Yeah, they did. Yep. So, you know, those are that's kind of like the common denominator right now. I really like the way Jack Higgins, the quarterback for Waterford's playing. I mean, he's been their leading rusher all year. He's been really good. They got some dudes there. Uh, it's going to be, ah, man, I wish I could go out there for this game. Maybe, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, I like, I'm going to go with the Lancers, though, Pete. I know I'm, I've been ride or die right now with Wyndham. I've picked them to get far in the in the, in the, uh, in the Class S, Double S race. But I'm, I'm going to go with Waterford here. <sighs> I'm shocked. I thought you were going to go with Wyndham. I thought you were going to go with the Whippets because I, too, I, too, am going to go with Waterford. Um, I really, Higgins kid just keeps popping up on our top performers Ugh. list every week. Two something. Almost 300 two yards something, rushing last week. something. 300, 200. Yeah. Bang, bang, boom. It was big uh, in the Ledger game, too. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Waterford as well. Okay. To the FCAC we go. And this one, I, I think, you know, sometimes the records don't, should it don't tell the whole story we got wilton three and four on the road to go play five and two fairfield ludlow who is playing you know look every game matters for fairfield ludlow here they uh they want to go to the playoffs for the first time they've they have not gone to the playoffs as this, this new in in you know this new Fairfield Ludlow school, and they talked about it. We did a story on it, and it starts with this Wilton game. They got Norwalk and, L- and Ward to kind of wrap up, but they're sitting here at five and two. A win against Wilton would do wonders. Now Wilton on the other side, I mean, can we do them a favor? I mean, who who could we do them a favor? Greenwich, yes, they beat Greenwich. Awesome. We we talked about it at length. Then New Canaan, then Darian, all in a row without a bye week. I mean, Joey Haggerty is still standing, thankfully. Thank God. Because he really makes Wilton go. But, I mean, now they're coming out, and they go right into L- 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 go into Ludlow. Ludlow's a good team. Yeah. Uh, I was having a good season. Ludlow has losses to New Canaan and Darian, just like Wilton. Wilton did lose to Norwalk, which Ludlow will play next week. And... Um, 
and they also lost to Massic, who's a really good team. So, Nor uh, Wilton has lost to the no, what the number three, number four, and number eight team in the poll. Um, and then you look at Ward, you look at Ludlow, NFA, okay, Bridgeport Central, okay, Notre Dame West Haven, they probably got the bad no, no, Notre Dame West Haven, not the good Notre Dame West Haven. Um, and then Stanford and Brian McMahon, I mean. Nothing really there really jumps out in, 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 in an exciting thing. This game's really tough. Um, I, I go first on this one, and uh, I'm going with Wilton here. I'm going with the battle-tested team. I think I think this Ludlow team is a really good shot to get to the state playoffs, but they need, like, that signature win. And I'm pretty sure I said on the on the meat grinder two weeks ago that, like, Wilton is, like, has left that tier of teams like Fairfield Ludlow in the FCS. So I, I'm going to go with Wilton here. I just think they're battle-tested. I think their schedule doesn't show either how good they are, while on the other side, I think Ludlow has maybe had a lot easier of a schedule. Sean, who do you like? Two weeks ago, Ludlow got smoked by Darian, 48 to set, uh, 15. It wasn't even that close. Last week, Darian played Wilton, which was in it with him. 35-26 victory. They needed every ounce of strength, Darian, to get out of that. Um, I'm going with Wilton. <laughs> just like you said, it's never easy. Ludlow needs to get over the hump here. They need to prove that they should be in, in the conversation with all these upper echelon FCI teams. They've had a good record. They can beat the teams below them. But now they got started beating the teams above them. I'm going to go. I don't think it happens here. I'm going to go with the Warriors. Beat. All right. To the NVL, the one of two conferences, which is just a cluster of nonsense. Um, <laughs> the NVL, Watertown, 5-2 and two, coming off a beatdown of Woodland, who was coming off a beatdown of Dogatuck, who barely got by Torrington. <laughs> and then you, you got Watertown 5-2 and two going to Municipal on Thursday night to play Holy Cross. Holy Cross also 5-2. and two. Guess what? Holy Cross lost to Naugatuck and lost to Ansonia. <laughs> I have no idea what to make of the NVL. You got two of the better quarterbacks in the league going at it in Drew Corrette and uh, Brady Gamby. But every time we talked about Watertown on this show, they've gone out and lost. Every time we talk about Holy Cross on this show, they go out and they lose. Sean, who actually gets over the hump, or do we just end in a tie? It's a great question. I have no idea. In fact, I have no idea about this game. Uh, I have no idea who to pick here. I mean, like, who did uh, Watertown lost to Naugatuck? They were no shows against Ansonia. I mean, at least, uh, at least a little bit of Holy Cross showed up. A little bit more against Ansonia than they did. Uh, than they did. Um, I, I mean, then Holy Cross beat Woodland too. So you can say that that was that was good. I don't know. I, I man, I'm gonna go with Holy Cross here. Uh, I I don't know. I just they, they don't have they don't. It's all Cowett Cowett running around with Graves catching TDs. Um, that's really kind of their offense. You can stop those guys down. You'll be in great shape, and they're all their defense. Though also leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, and Watertown's going to sure go up. It's going to be a shootout. Let's just be honest. Here. Forty. Let's see. I'm going to say forty-four to forty-two. Holy Cross. Why don't we say that? Dude? I'm not writing the box score. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I, I got Holy Cross really still on the upper tier there. The NVL as precarious as that is, I'm going to go with Crusaders. Ooh, all right. This is where we part. I'm going with Watertown. I am doubling down on Brady Gamby on Watertown this season. Um, I think they're so good. I really do. I think this is a team. They got knocked down by Ansonia. Naga tucked back-to-back weeks. I think they reset. I mean, what they did to, to Woodland last week coming off impressive. of that amazing win was just so impressive. I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, it was just a beatdown. And I think they take it right into Municipal Stadium on Thursday night. I'm going with Watertown. I, th- you know, Sean, I think we both should go. That is a nice Thursday night game. That's a great. Th- we we love those Thursday night games at Municipal. Yeah, it's it's in our action, gallery, baby. Right? It's in the action. Action. All right, right. action. All right, to the Pequot. The Pequot. This one's really interesting. Capital Prep seven and zero. Going to Granby Canton, who I feel like we just don't talk about enough on this show. Granby Canton is 5-0, and 5-1, and one, I apologize, with their only loss coming against Rockville, who is also 7-0. Rockville yeah. won that game 27-21. to 
we Grampy kind of disappeared for like a week, and there was like a postponement, and then it got postponed again, or it got it was postponed, and then they had a buy, and I kind of feel like we kind of forgot about Grampy Canton a little bit. When they're going on, the, they get the play host to Capital Prep, who is just beating everybody up in the Peapod. Now, you've been on Capital Prep all year before the year. Granby Canton has been to the playoffs every year as a co-op. Uh, you talked about Vinny uh, on the meat grinder. You know, he's just another guy who's been there for a couple of years, just doing his thing. Obviously, his team drones at Capital Prep. We've talked about a lot. Uh, I'm going to go first for this one. And I'm going to say Capital Prep goes down. I'm picking Granby Canton in this game. I think, you know, the home field definitely helps. Uh, it's not an easy drive to get to Granby. We both did it last year. Um, but I'm going to go with Granby Canton in this one. I just got a feeling that they are going to take down Capital Prep. Sean, who do you like? Oof. Well, I mean, that's a, it's... I was leaning that way. A little bit. I mean, they only beat Brent North Brand for eight to seven, so you kind of feel like maybe they're running out a little bit out of gas. They did beat Valley Regional in a shootout. They did beat HK and Cromwell. Maybe they got getting them early and really helped them. Possible. Awesome. I was leaning this game, and you know what, Pete? I'm going with you. I'm going with Grammy Canton in this one. I think wow. defense uh, fired up. I think this is going to be a shot. I mean, now that we've both picked them. It's probably not going to be a shot. <laughs> Apple prep. They're going to be like, wait a minute. Next, you think we're going to lose? We better start playing. But uh, I think Grammy Canton kind of shows up and beats him here. I absolutely agree with you, Pete. I'm going to go with uh, – I'm with you on it. I think Hashim Jones is going to play great. But uh, Vinny Fort and the gang, you know, they their defense shouldn't be overrated. I'm going to go with – I think Grammy knocks them off. Yeah, I do too. All right. Wow, I'm shocked we're both on the same one on that one. Um, all right. We got the SEC. We got four well, games left. You picked them, and I was already leaning that way, and I was going to go the other way, but I'm like, no, I let's sit with my gut here. All right. Everyone everyone who makes the picks with us, they always send me, I'm not thinking with my heart, I go with my gut. They go 9-1 and one or 5-5. Five and five. So some guts are good, some guts are bad. Mine is bad. All right. All right, so to the SEC, we got Jonathan Law 5-2 and two on the road to play Sheehan. 5-2 and two Titans. I mean... Both of these teams, two losses to 7-0 and teams. Shane lost to Killingly. Jonathan Law lost to Brookfield. And both of these teams have losses to double L schools. Law lost to Hamden. Mm -hmm. And so Sheehan lost to Fairfield Prep. Didn't Sheehan lose to Hamden too? Or they beat him? No, Sheehan right. beat him. Prep, prep that's the one. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, who do you like in this one? I, I, I've i seen Law. I haven't seen Sheehan yet this year, but Law no. is very young, a lot of youth. Uh, they're playing really well. Um, that's really all I know about Jonathan Law because, I had, like I said, I haven't seen Sheehan. But you, you get to go first on this one. I know. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sheehan uh, in this spot. This is Sheehan's bread and butter game. They usually take care of business here. Law lost to Hamden. Sheehan didn't. So, Titans. All right, I too am going with Sheen. Like you said, this is their bread and butter. These are the games that Sheen wins. Yeah, uh, the prep game, Killingly game are, are great, and they help them get ready for the playoffs. And you know, Sheen might see Killingly again. Let's not forget, Killingly was beating Kill. Uh, Sheen was beating Killingly pretty convincingly uh, before Killingly made that great comeback. Okay, <laughs> all right, we're both on the Sheen board. I actually think I might want to go to that game. Anyway, so to the SWC we go. We got Benel six and one. This is the other league that is just a cluster. Newtown. Newtown, welcome to the season. Uh, Newtown is 7-0, and and they're finally playing a team with a winning record. Welcome, Newtown. Coming off their bye, too. But Benel, Benel, 6-1. and one. Obviously, they had that big win against Masic, and then coming off their bye, they were still on the bye when they played Brookfield, it feels like. And uh, But Benel, Newtown, SWC... We got dudes versus dudes, right? Um, I'm going to go first in this one. Um, I, this probably is going to bite me again. I'm going with Newtown. I, I, I know that Newtown really hasn't played the toughest schedule. Stanford 0-7, New Fairfield 3-4, Southington 3-4, New Milford 3-4, Pomperog 0-7, Shelton 1-6, Stratford 0-7. Um, but they're kind of maybe having the bye at the perfect time. Um, to prepare them for Bendel, Barlow, and Massick to end the season. Um, 
I'm going with Newtown in this one, Sean. Who do you like? He, uh, he won't bite. Yeah, I'm going with Newtown too. Look, I think Newtown's still the best team in the league. Maybe Massick now as things go on. I know Benel beat Massick, and then Benel turned around and he lost in, to Brookfield. Maybe Brookfield, but I, I think they still Newtown's still the kind of the the team to beat here. Uh, I think Benel's also banged up a little bit too. I mean, some guys might be out. Uh, I'm not really sh- quite sure who is some some, but uh, I think that's that's going to be a little bit of a wake up call for them uh, again see where they really are but I, i'm, I'm going to go with the uh the nighthawks they had a nice fresh you know week off perfect spot for them new town all right got two more saturday afternoon fun saturday morning fun staples six and one on the road to st joseph five and two the hogs the hogs uh, just ht jones missed second game in a row the backup quarterback has played well but they've also run into Greenwich and Darien in back-to-back weeks. Yeah. That's not easy. Those are combined 12 and 2. Um, you never want to go into those games shorthanded. Uh, and then they got Staples. Staples is 6-1. and one. Their only loss is to New Canaan. Fun fact as well, Staples has not beaten a team with a winning record this year. Um, and now they get St. Joe's. Sean. Who do you like in this one? Pete, when I was up at Choate uh, the other night watching them uh, wipe up uh, Avon Old Farms, I bumped into uh, Jermaine Hatchin and his father. And his father was like, where's the love? Where's the love, St. Joe? We've been playing well all, you know, defense has been playing well all year. And uh, that has been the case. St. Joe's defense has really been good. North Haven was good. Uh, even against Greenwich. I mean, let's remember, against Greenwich, you know, the quarterback situation has been tough. They, they threw two pick sixes. In that game, they were right in it. Otherwise, and they had a botched uh, fumble. So St. Joe, uh, you know, offensively needs to get things going. That said, though, uh, until that, uh, until their offensive situation is rectified, H.U. E. Jones has clearly been a team leader on the O. Uh, he gets the ball to his guys, but uh, I-, I have a hard time picking St. Joe in this one. Staples defense has been really great, and Nick Wild has been great. I think St. Joe is kind of like what? Sorry, I think Staples offense, defense, special teams. Complete package right there. Uh, when when uh, when when it suits them, I'm gonna go with Rutgers. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Staples here too. Um, I think their offense is good enough. I think their defense is really underrated. Staples' defense, I think, doesn't get the love. I mean, they've been really they were an offensive juggernaut last year. Um, so I think this year the defense is really the, the the unit that's doing a lot of the work. Also, you mentioned special teams, Josh Marcus. Two-time state championship winning goalie is dropping bombs with his foot uh, as the Staples punter. But I'm going to go with Staples as well. All right, to the last one, another Saturday afternoon game. This one is Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock. Brookfield, 7-1. and one. Make sure to listen to the Coach's Corner interview with Coach Brian Muller. On the road to play the two-time defending state champions, Joel Barlow, 4-3. and three. Mm. Now this one... Part of this SWC chaos. I mean, uh, Barlow win here sends everything into chaos. Brookfield win. Brookfield goes to 8-0. and oh, And I kind of like their shot kind of the rest of the way here uh, for Brookfield. They have Massick and Bunnell. I mean, Mas- uh, Massick and Bethel. I apologize. Massick, good team, obviously, 6-1. and one, But you want to use the transitive property that John likes to use. Massick lost it. to Bunnell. Brookfield smoked Bunnell. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so... I, I don't know, um, uh, but I do know about this game. And this game, I'm going to go with Brookfield. I think Barlow has just kind of dropped some games, some head scratchers, New Milford, East Catholic. I know East Catholic 6-1, and one, but they're, divi- they're CCC Division 4 6-1. You know, Barlow, you want to try and win three state titles, you got to win the New Milford game. you got to win the East Catholic game. When you have Brookfield killing Lee and Newtown on your schedule, I'm going with Brookfield this one. Yeah. I think this might be the end of Barlow's reign. I could be wrong. I'm not a uh, math guy. Uh, but- I mean, look, there's some really good teams at Double S, and uh, but you can just feel. Like, I can't. First of all, before we go on, I, I, I the fact if you told me in 2008, for example, that Barlow would be a, a two-time state champion, defending state champion. In the like 10 years, I would have been like, you are absolutely nuts. So let's just give them that credit, you know. Yeah. Granted, a lot of that, that had to do with, you know, getting six divisions rather than oh. four. But yeah. uh, certainly, they've been some really good teams and some really good players. The line is very good, Pete. 
Um, you went with Brookfield. I think it's going to be a real test uh, of, uh, of defenses in this. Who's going to stop the run game? Killing Lee had a lot of trouble, and I love Killing Lee this year. Killing had a lot of trouble with Barlow, but, you know, I think Brookfield's defense is really, they were really tough against the run uh, against Bennell, and they've been really good all year. Um, I mean, who is the, oh, man, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Uh, the uh, the linebacker for, for Brookfield is tremendous. And, the old uh, uh, Silva? Sylvia. Chase Silva. Yeah. Great player, man. Uh, he kind of holds that whole group together, and they got Jack. And they got uh, they got some dudes. So Michael Walters clearly is up there. Uh, I like Barlow, but I think Brookfield's is off the mission. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So that is it for week nine of the picks. I mean, I'm feeling a ten and zero here. <laughs> we're, and All right. we're and we're gone. So <laughs> let's see. For uh, for Sean Patrick Wally, I'm Pete Paguaga. We will see you guys out on the field. <laughs>